Okay, everybody, this is my spoiler review of The Boys Season 3, Episode 7. This is the penultimate episode already. And with shows, usually penultimate episodes can either be the crazy episode, and then you have a chilled out finale, or it's the other way, where it's more of a setup for a crazy finale, and that's definitely the case here, because we also had a crazy episode last week, so they had to kind of chill things out a bit and move some pieces to set up something crazy to happen for the final episode. So this episode deals with a lot of different characters, I'm going to break my review up into different character storylines. We'll start with Butcher, Soldier Boy, and Huey. And I just want to give a shout out to Paul Reiser playing the legend. He's always a treat, but he's great here. And he probably has the funniest line of the episode when he says to Huey, Between you and me, Soldier Boy did the singing what Pantyhose did to finger effing, which I thought was great. And Huey's reaction was great. So just a great comedic line that makes you like think for a second. I love that. And we also learn in the same scene that Soldier Boy is basically a hack with a lot of his claims like fighting in Normandy, but he was in Normandy two weeks after D-Day, just an example. So Huey learns more than information as the audience does. And what they've been doing with this group is it's setting up different members of Payback that they're going after with Soldier Boy. And now we're dealing with Mindstorm, who is paranoid all the time because he hears people's thoughts. And they learn to from Soldier Boy not to make eye contact with him. That's how he's going to affect you. It's very funny, too, that Butcher and Huey talk about the PTSD that Soldier Boy clearly has and that Butcher likes him smoking the weed because it's taking the edge off of that to calm the guy down. But he says, what sad bastard self-medicates like that as Butcher is handing Huey the V24, which is just ironic. Also interesting that Soldier Boy is hearing things and they're alluding it to like it's because of the weed, but it's definitely something else. Something else is going on with Soldier Boy from what has been done to him by the Russians. Now, Mindstorm makes eye contact with Butcher. This will set up us getting this flashback sequence with Butcher and him being in an endless nightmare, but it also sets up Huey wanting to save Butcher and making the choice to save family and friends and kind of coming back to the old Huey roots we know. Now with the Butcher flashback, I liked it and I kind of didn't like it. And the reason I kind of didn't like it is in the same episode, there's a clever way of revealing things, which is done with Black Noir storyline, which I loved with the cartoons. It was different, it was unique, and it, it got to the point and gave us a lot of new information where Butcher's flashback is giving us a lot of stuff we already know. Kind of feels like any superhero show you'd watch in the DC universe. Like you've seen this kind of scene a million times where someone's in sepia tone. They're looking at their flashback trauma and it kind of just goes through the episode showing you what happened to them. But most of the, again, this information we knew, it was more the only thing we really learned is that he really does feel a lot of guilt for causing Lenny's suicide because he left him there with his father. And it leads to him when he snaps out of the nightmare seeing Huey, which makes total sense because when he's apologizing to Lenny in his head, it's Huey that sees him, the other version of Lenny in his eyes, and trying to protect people, the ones he's lost, like Becca and Lenny, and now it's Huey he's got to protect, because he always kind of has a decision that causes a loss of someone he loves, and it's it's crazy that by the end of the episode, that, again, Butcher will still do that. He'll still make that same mistake, and he does it with Huey, which we're going to get to, but, again, this just felt a little too cliche for a show like The Boys because The Boys makes fun of these things in superhero shows and The Boys always tries to do things different. So this was kind of out of character for the show where the flashbacks with Black Noir learning this information through a cartoon for the audience was way more in The Boys' flavor. Now, after all this though, it's crazy that Soldier Boy throws a knife right into Mindstorm's eye, which is just perfect and makes sense because of his power. And it's interesting that Soldier Boy knocks Huey over and this makes Butcher glare at Soldier Boy with his eyes. So they're also setting up this story for the finale where it really will be probably the boys versus Homelander and Soldier Boy. And I feel like they're setting up Butcher's betrayal to Huey as going to be a big conflict season four where it'd be boys versus Butcher. We learn Soldier Boy learns from Mindstorm before he brutally kills him that he had Homelander as a son. That's why he was sold out to Russia by Stan Edgar. And this brutal killing of Mindstorm from Soldier Boy with the shield is very reflective of Falcon and the Winter Soldier character of US Agent when he does that in that show. And now, because we see throughout this episode, Butcher learns this information from Starlight that she learns in this episode as well, that the compound V24 is lethal after three to five doses, that she tells Butcher this, he doesn't tell Huey this, and the boys are smart enough to know that Butcher isn't going to tell Huey this because that's who Butcher is and he still goes back to his tragic flaw at the end of the day and it sets up now Starlight really needs to save Huey. And I also really like the twist at the end of this episode that Soldier Boy telling Homelander is his dad was a really good twist 
and I did not see that coming, so I think that's actually pretty cool. So now let's jump into everything going on with Frenchie, Kamiko, MM, and Starlight in general in this episode. It's interesting because Kamiko is really the focal point here, and she wants her powers back, which is a bit of a surprise, right? Because we just saw her all happy in the hospital that she lost her powers, but as we see, she knows that in her whole life she blamed her problems on the V, but realized it wasn't the V, it was her her own problems and that was an excuse and that she actually wants the powers back to protect people like Frenchie where she was upset she couldn't protect him in the same way where she almost lost Frenchie. Now there's a lot of foreshadowing here of Kimiko's death I believe in the next episode because one Starlight says to her you can get yourself killed doing the permanent V again because this isn't her doing it at a young age this is her doing it again which I don't think there's much research at least have we seen the show of what that actually can do to you also she dances with frenchie to dream a little dream of me the song she dreamed about earlier in the season of singing right and i feel like that's going to set up some kind of scene with kimiko that's very sad where she might die and she's going out actually getting her voice singing that song because they keep showing that and you also see frenchie saying lines to her like you could walk away you and me you have your freedom now you sure you want to do this and when he actually is the one which is important to inject Kimiko to kind of set up a maybe a story in season five of Frenchie feeling responsible for whatever happens to Kimiko by putting the V in her that there's sad music playing in that scene and that Frenchie's face is sad at the end we end it all it's not a moment that is like oh happy it's like concerned face of Frenchie's last shot that says a lot now we also see develop with Frenchie he realizes it's actually a vapor that shuts down soldier boy and that that vapors in russia i'm wondering how they're going to do that because clearly they're setting that up of them trying to get that i don't know if that's gonna be in the next episode because that seems that's gonna be really fast especially if you have to go back to russia so i'm curious what the plan is with that now mother's milk is pissed that todd is bringing his daughter to a homelander rally and like i've said obviously it's so obvious that this whole season is homelander really taking the shoes of Donald Trump. That's what these writers are inspired by when they're writing this. And you see that Todd is saying that Starlight's just as bad as Homelander to Mother's Milk. And he's saying that she's trafficking kids. Again, reflective of things we hear in society today. And you see he says, you're not her father. And Todd says back to that, someone's got to be. So he definitely deserved that punch from Mother's Milk. Mother Milk is clearly upset though that his daughter saw it again that was also a bit cliche too where the kid sees the thing you didn't want them to see that's out of character of you so again a little off from what the boys usually does now homelander confronts starlight in the vault building and wants her to recant everything she said at the end of the last episode but she says back to this i'm gonna stop soldier boy and save mave and i'm not afraid of you anymore she also brings up him killing supersonic and he sort of not totally confesses to killing him by just acknowledging the night and saying you remember what i said to you about what happened to huey next she records all this so it's like a half confession they could definitely cover up ashley but it's huge it's another huge thing that starlight's doing to homelander publicly in the public eye so we'll see how that kind of turns out now speaking of mave we see what's happened with her she's not dead obviously wasn't going to be dead but homelander has her in a cell and horrifying stuff that he's only keeping her alive for her eggs because he wants to have the failsafe of having a child he's always dreamed of with Maeve. So he says it would be stronger than his child Ryan and that he would obviously would have killed her like she's alluded to but this is what he wants. He mentions though to her about what Soldier Boy did in the last episode and that the people who survived his attack were fried out of their power. But I'm still head scratching at this because the ones who survived the attack that we know very well is A-Train and Deep, and they have not lost their power. So it's so inconsistent, that whole scene to me. I'm still trying to figure out, again, with the Deep and A-Train, how they just walked out of that building with no scratches and still having their powers. And that line doesn't help either. Another weird line to me, this is totally nitpicking, but when Maeve says to her, him, still top three day in my life because today is the day I saw you scared. Why top three? You know, what were the top two? That was just a strange line to me. But you see Homelander is really actually terrified of soldier boy in ways especially because he's still thinking about him at the rally and to calm his scared child he does something his scared child also loves to do which is this milk fetish he's got he goes to the cows for milk and this is when newman runs into him he's brutally choking her but newman is like help me one one small favor i'll help you so can't trust that newman no we don't know who she's playing here and if she's really helping starlight at all like she was trying last episode and she's helping homelander Again, I'm just 
gonna go with that she's for herself like most people in the show now let's go to the character storyline i thought was the best this episode and that is with black noir because he's been such a mysterious character we never knew if they'd really even lean into his character he was kind of always just there for some comic moments and also to be like homelander's bodyguard in a sense and i love that we see him at buster beaver's pizza restaurant which is like a spin on chuck e cheese and you see the cartoons are talking to him and they're like you can't hide from soldier boy we got you through that erection in the seventh grade i thought was hysterical but you see we got to see in cartoon form soldier boy being just like the homelander we know and how he's a tyrant to his team and why they all hated him and that black noir wanted to be in this movie and he just went out of his way to tell people he's not funny and he sucks and then beats him to a pulp i mean literally puts his fingers in his nose and that's not even the first incident of abuse with Soldier Boy directly to Black Noir. So we see now, which I thought was brilliant how they did this, because we had seen with Mallory's story, from her point of view, the flashback of the battle at Nicaragua with Mallory payback versus the Russians. But we see what really was going on behind the scenes there, that Stan Edgar, of course, eating almonds in front of Black Noir. We know Black Noir is allergic. But this is where he told Black Noir of the plan to have Soldier Boy taken because he had heard there was a child and that this child is going to fly. And that we know this is Homelander. That was his reasoning to go with, okay, it is time to get a soldier Because yes, he's a problem, he's a menace, but now they can find a replacement for him. Now, you should definitely go back to episode three and watch everything in the flashbacks with Mallory. Because they did such a good job of like misdirecting you as the audience. Thinking that payback at the end when Mallory was knocked out, that payback was all hit by bombs from the Russians, but what really it was was Soldier Boy. And that when we saw, if you go back and look how messed up Black Noir's face is, we think it's from the Russians, it was Soldier Boy cause it. So definitely worthy of going back and watching that scene. Because you get to kind of see the continuation of the cartoon we see that's brutal of him beating Black Noir's face. And then you get to see the direct aftermath in real life form. So definitely watch that back to back. It's worth it. It's really cool how they did that. And it's cool that Crimson Countess was the one who kind of put him down. And then in the real time scene of that, Crimson Countess was the one telling Mallory, oh no, it was the Russians and they took Soldier Boy, but clearly they were all in on it. So I thought that was really well done. And I love that the cartoon characters say to him, you need to now face Soldier Boy setting up Black Noir to kind of have a Sol Soldier Boy showdown next episode. I hope next episode, which would be sick. And it's interesting that they cut from that scene directly to a close-up of Mother's Milk, someone else who's got a thing against Soldier Boy and suffers severe trauma from Soldier Boy. So you're wondering if there might be like maybe some peace kind of found here between Black Noir and Mother's Milk and they fight against Soldier Boy. Who knows? Before I wrap up this review, I just want to hit on everything with Deep and A-Train. I thought... Even though I've constantly said these two characters are past their expiration date, I had praised how awesome A-Train's kill was last episode, but I also think that was a great way to go out. I'm still just shocked they're keeping him going, and I still think deep scenes this season compared to any season have been the funniest, so I, I give it props for that, even though I don't know if it's so necessary to still even have the character, but I love the scene here with Deep and his wife, and he wants her to do things with him because they're vanilla sex of late, so he has the octopus join. That's where the humor of the boy shines, where it's just like nothing you see on TV. It, it's just anything can happen, and this is one of those scenes. And it's interesting because he pisses off his wife, and she says the truth of the matter again that he's an idiot and that she's the reason he's been kind of thriving of late. So it's interesting they kind of have separated there and that he really does need someone like her. And you see with A-Train, Ashley, of course, knows how to spin what happened to Blue Hawk and that she's going to make it that Soldier Boy killed Blue Hawk and A-Train and found peace with each other. And the karma to A-Train is the person he despises the most for paralyzing his brother. He has his heart now, which was pretty crazy and, and a clever way to kind of have some kind of reason for A-Train to survive that. But again, I mean, I feel like that was such a nice ending with A-Train's storyline last episode, so I'm surprised they kind of kept him alive here. But we'll see. I really dug this episode. I didn't think it was the best episode for those kind of things. I said, like, Butcher's flashback was a very big part of this episode, but I just felt like it was like anything we've seen before. You put on Titans from DC or any of those shows, it's the same format here. It's the same cut and paste kind of thing the boys are better than that they can do it even if they're going to show it through mindstorm and flashback do something unique about it make it more interesting it just felt like something i've seen a hundred thousand times so overall this episode i'm giving 8.7 for the strength of black noir story i like the stuff going on with soldier boy and huey and the stuff going on with the twist of v24 having these side effects and that starlight had some interesting stuff with kamiko here and that kamiko has gotten her powers back so that was good and i like 
the twist of Soldier Boy being Homelander's father. So it's setting up, I think, that's going to be a great finale. I can't wait to see it. But I'm giving this one 8.7. Solid episode. Still, it's the boys. It's consistent. And the season, to me, is still the best. Even better than season one. And I'm really excited to see what happens with the finale. So let me know your thoughts down below. I love to hear your thoughts. I read every comment. Try to respond as many as I can. Please make sure to subscribe. It means so much and helps me in so many ways. And it's been super competitive now. The cat's kind of out of the bag about the boys. So if I can appreciate anything I can get because it's like so many reviews of the boys now. So if you guys really enjoy this, if you can help me anyway, sharing or liking, just subscribing too. It means so much. And please follow me at Steve Varley Show on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok for more of me. And I'll see you next time.